Good evening, everyone. In this session, we will be discussing about the paper which explains TATCA and its protective role in rescuing the retinal pigment epithelial cells from stresses like ER and oxidative stress. Retinal pigment epithelial cell or RPE plays a major role in vision, especially in the visual cycle. The process of seeing begins when light waves enter the front of the eye. On the exterior part of the eye is an area called cornea, which includes pupil through which light enters the eye. Then the light is refracted by a lens and focused onto the retina. There are special cells in the retina which are of two types. They are two types of photoreceptor. One interprets the color, another one interprets the intensity of the light. When any of these processes deregulated, it affects the vision. Let's take an example of blindness disease called Stargardt's disease, which is one of the most common form of juvenile macular degeneration with an incidence of one in 8,000 to 10,000. In there, lipofusin accumulation and the macular degeneration, macula is a part which is the center most interior of the retina, which are uh, degenerated, which is a clinical characteristics of this disease. In Stargardt's disease, defective protein in photoreceptors result in accumulation of lipofusin in RPE cells as photoreceptor shed daily. Lipofusin is composed of materials which is very toxic to the RPE cells. The RPE cells becomes engorged with this toxic material and over time begin to shrink and die. Since RPE cells are important for the survival of photoreceptors, when RPE cells are lost, photoreceptor that lie directly above them also dies and this leads to the blindness. What are the symptoms? Symptoms starts with the reduced vision that is a central vision, then yellowish fleck in the macula, then the reduced color perception happens. So this paper explains the degenerative diseases or the cell death can be prevented using the TADCA. And uh, what is TADCA? You must have gone through the title name, which is a big, big name that is Toro Arso Deoxycholic Acid. Uh, if you try to say it five times, it will be difficult. That's why we call it TADCA. So it is, it stands for, uh, TADCA stands for, as we told, Toro Arso Deoxycholic Acid. It is a biological substrate which is naturally made by human body. How the TADCA is formed in human body? It all starts in the di digestive tract. We should have good bacteria, also called beneficial bacteria, here, mostly in the colon, also called as large intestine. Atka or arso deoxycholic acid, better known as bile, is made by liver and stored in gallbladder. The bacteria in the gut converts atka to tatka. Just remember, the good bacteria in the gut helps to make tatka. Now, coming to the for benefits of tatka, there are numerous and more are being discovered every single year. So current researches seems to show benefits for a variety of biological effects, such as some prevents early cell death, then prevents the uh, progression of Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, stroke, retinal degenerative disease, ALS and detoxification of liver. Here. In this paper, we'll be focusing on the retinal degenerative disease angle of TATCA usage. Coming to TATCA and retinal degenerative disease, there are a few papers which has already been published, which tells about the protective role of TATCA against degeneration, then amelioration of photoreceptor cell death, protection of ganglion cells from both NMDA and nerve crush model. The same research group has uh, shown the protective role of retinitis pigmentosa mice model using TATCA. What causes retinal cell death? Here, ER stress and oxidative stress contribute synergistically in tissue damage. Unfolded protein response failure also lead to the apoptosis and cell death. In this study, they proved the protective role of TATCA in both against ER stress and oxidative stress. 
coming to the materials and method they have done six major experiments and statistical analysis as a part of this study coming to the cell viability they have performed an experiment in arp 19 cells arp is nothing but adult retinal pigment epithelial cells which was cultured in dmem f12 and then they have uh, seeded 5 into 10 raised to 4 cells in one well of 96 well plate for the treatment and kept for 24 hours incubation then another 24 hours incubation with h2o2 t uh, tapsigargin tatka h2o2 plus tatka then uh, Tapsigargin plus Tatka. After that, they have performed MTTSA to analyze the viability of the cells. The second angle was detection of apoptosis. They have washed the cells after culturing, fixed in formaldehyde, washed it again with PBS, then permeabilization was done using Triton 600. Then the reaction mix was done, then they have performed a tunnel assay uh, after mounting with TAPI. The next experiment was the quantification of reactive oxygen species. They have done using a kit and uh, the same uh, pattern they have followed for culturing the cells and then they have treated with H2O2 and the H2O2 plus Tatka. And they have checked the ROS using a kit, uh, using fluorescence. The next was Q, uh, QPCR. They have looked into the inflammatory angle. They have looked into the oxidative stress angle. They have also looked into the ER stress angle, which will be further shown in the further slides. They have targeted genes after extracting the RNA from uh, the treated cells, then converted it to cDNA, then performed QPCR. Then next thing was done. Uh, to ensure the cells, whether they are undergoing apoptosis or not. The caspase 3 and 7, they are the executional caspases, which comes in the end part of the apoptosis. They have checked whether it is undergoing apoptosis or not. And this was done using a kit. The next experiment was with ELISA. They have checked the secretory expression of inflammatory markers after doing the similar steps in cell culture. The final part was statistical analysis. They have done using the graph pad, Prisma 6 software. Coming to the results, there are main four results, which uh, shows about the cell viability, then the Tatka effect on oxidative stress, pro-inflammatory angle, and the ER stress angle. Coming to the first part of the result, Effect of H2O2 and Tatka on cell viability. Here, as we all know, the hydrogen peroxide is widely used procedure to cause oxidative damage or stress in the cellular models. Here, graph A shows Tatka on cell viability. ARP19 cells were exposed at different concentration from 220 to 500 micromolar. There were not much difference. Here we can see the pointer, we uh, look at the pointer, this is untreated and this is 25 mil, uh, micromolar till 100 micromolar there are not much difference in the cell viability however when the uh, concentration was increased from 200 to 500 the cell viability has gone down and they also looked at the cell viability in the presence of tatka after treating with h2o2 and we can see here untreated is this and then after adding tatka it is somehow similar to the untreated and when the h2o2 was added around 750 micromolar which is already standardized in their previous paper you can see the ic50 the 50 percentage of cell viability is there at 750 micromolar then uh, they have uh, done the combination combinatorial study with h2o2 and tatka and they could see the revival of the cells they the cell cell viability has gone up. And when we go to the graph C, to examine the decreased viability is due to cell death, tunnel assay was performed. Tunnel assay is nothing but uh, the ultimate, the final apoptotic angle is the fragmentation of the DNA, and uh, that is being detected using tunnel assay. Here we can see the first one is untreated, there is no 
uh, apoptot apoptotic cells, the cells which are undergoing apoptosis, where in the second one, in 750 micromolar H2O2 uh, treated cells, we can see a lot of cells are undergoing apoptosis. And uh, th the last one is a positive control, which uh, shows that the experiment has worked. And the third one, as we can see, in the presence of H2O2, Tatka has reduced the tunnel positive cells compared to the H2O2 alone. And D is nothing but the quantitative analysis of the same. We can see at 750 micromolar, the apoptotic cell number has gone up, whereas when the Tatka was added, that has gone down. Going to the next angle of study, they have also looked at the caspases whether it is actually undergoing apoptosis. They have looked at the uh, assay, assay with uh, pro activity of the caspases. So uh, they have found that in the presence of Tatka, the caspase has gone down, whereas in the presence of H2O2 alone, the caspase 3 is significantly up. And in the presence of Tatka, that has gone down significantly, which shows Tatka decreases oxidative stress induced caspase 3 expression and caspase 3 7 activity in ARP19 cells. So, in their previous objective, they have shown H2O2 can induce oxidative stress. In this objective, they have examined whether Tatka could reduce H2O2 induced ROS protection, that is, a reactive oxygen species, in ARP19 cells. So uh, the first one we can see is the ROS level in the presence of H2O2 and Tatka. So they have done an experiment to see whether uh, the ROS, the reactive oxygen species, is going down in the presence of Tatka. So we can see in the presence of H2O2 that has gone up and in the presence of Tatka after treating with H2O2, it has gone down. And all others are the antioxidant genes or proteins. Here we can see the SOD1 expression and the GPX1 expression. All these are mRNA expression and we can see uh, all have gone up because all are against oxidative stress. Here they wanted to look at more whether this mRNA is uh, having a function. So they looked at these two SOD1 and CAT1 expression they have looked at using assay kits. Here we can see in the presence of Tatka that has really gone up in the protein level. And uh, there is one more important uh, uh, glutathione uh, other than the S SOD and CAT1. They have checked another uh, antioxidant which plays an important role uh, as I said. So they checked uh, GSH level and they could find it is gone up in the presence of Tutka, whereas this is the uh, oxidative stress marker that has gone down in the presence of Tutka. <clears throat> so after that, they have looked at an inflammatory angle. So initially they have uh, checked in oxidative stress angle and then now the inflammatory angle because there is a strong relation between oxidative stress and inflammatory markers. So here, as we can see, in the presence of uh, H2O2, all inflammatory markers have gone up very significantly. Whereas when uh, Tutka was added, this has gone down. And they also looked at the secretory level using ELISA. And this replicated the same result, which shows that Tutka significantly reduced oxidative stress markers as well as inflammatory stress markers. So the next angle they have looked at is ER stress angle because ER stress has been widely considered to be associated with pathogenesis of retinal degenerative disease. Here, Tapsi Gargin is the one which induces ER stress, which is uh, being used globally for all the ER stress related experiments. So the figure 6A, we can see in the presence of Tatka, there is no change as we already have seen in the initial graphs, figures. So when uh, Tapsi Gargin has added, 
the Tapsigar gain, which induces ER stress, has reduced the cell viability. It has gone down. Whereas when Tatka has added, along with the Tapsigar gain, that rescued the cells from undergoing apoptosis. So the similar way they have conducted the tunnel assay here, and we can see uh, in the presence of Tapsigargin, there are many uh, ce uh, cells which are undergoing apoptosis, whereas in the presence of Tatka, there are very few, and which has been depicted here, uh, which is a densitometry analysis. So we can see uh, untreated, that is less apoptotic cells, which are uh, zero, and whereas in the Tapsigargin, that has gone up like anything. And then the third one, after adding Tapsigargin with Tatka, the apoptotic cell level has gone down. There is another protein uh, which uh, has a great role in the ER stress angle, that is CHOP, which plays a major role in ER stress induced apoptosis. So here they looked at CHOP and CHOP also, that actually induced apoptosis. So when Tatka has added, its level has gone down. And there is another one in ER stress, UPR signaling, uh, which is uh, the IRE one induces XBP1 that subsequently upregulates the BIP. Therefore, the uh, indicator of the ER stress uh, angle they have looked at. And here also they can see when Tatka was added, the ER stress angle also gone down. So coming to the conclusion, what they have found is the, uh, the Tatka suppressed oxidative stress, inflammatory markers, as well as the ER stress markers. So the discussion, as we can see, the 8.7 percentage of worldwide population has age-related macular degeneration and all kind of uh, several other retinal degenerative diseases. And the projected number of people people uh, with the disease is around 196 million in 2020, increasing to 288 million in 2040. So, so uh, coming to the discussion part, Tatka has attenuated cell death, decreased uh, ROS production, upregulated antioxidant gene expression, and inhibited inflammation in H2O2-treated RPE cells. Also, suppressed Tapsigargin-induced ER stress and associated cell death. So coming to the conclusion that Tatka can protect RPE from all these kind of stresses according to the literature and the research. So the critique for this paper would be a bright field image of cells under treatment would have clarified uh, a little more uh, assumptions and uh, clarifications. And the experiments could have done in chronic way also. Uh, like a treatment they could have given uh, a chronic way because the age related macular degeneration and most of the macular de degenerations happens uh, with time so the chronic way would have given more appropriate results then pre and post treatment could have included to see the exact rescuing effect so they have mentioned they uh, did the combination of uh, both er stress inducer and the Tatka, the similar way H2O2 and Tatka. So instead, they could have done pre or post treatment. Then they could have also performed experiment on primary RPE cells for further validation. Then tunnel assay for Tatka alone could have added in the first session and the last session as well. So Tatka uh, alone, a tunnel assay, they haven't shown. Uh, also, in the initial discussions, it was uh, shown in the figure that after 100 micromolar, the Tatka has induced uh, cell death also. And the final thing, RPE cell functionality study also could have included, like a phagocytosis study, they could have included to show more uh, authenticity on the RPE cell function and rescuing effect. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the nice presentation, Armand. So now the presentation is open for discussion. Scholars, if you have any um, comments or suggestion or questions, you can ask it. Please unmute your mic and ask a question. Uh, 
हेलो आई एम सिंपल कुमार सुमन आई है क्वेश्चन नॉर्मल पर्सन नॉर्मल पर्सन सपोज अ पर्सन हैविंग आरपीई ऑक्सीडेटिव स्ट्रेस ओके सो दिस इज मेडिकली टर्म सो द द इंडिविजुअल हैविंग नो आइडिया व्हाट इज गोइंग गोइंग ऑन विद मी सो इट इज 100% गारंटी टाटका कैन रीस्टोर द आरपीई आरपीई ऑक्सीडेटिव स्ट्रेस डैमेज ओके अकॉर्डिंग टू द एक्सपेरिमेंट्स इन विट्रो uh in the title itself it is mentioned in vitro that is been uh, cultured in the mammalian cells and they have shown that tatka can uh, rescue the er stress oxidative stress and the inflammatory angle so in some way it can be done and uh, there have lots of publications since uh, i think uh, around uh, 20 years since this tatka has been uh, in the market as uh, from the pharmaceutical company and uh, uh, earlier e- e- even uh, 50 to 100 years the chinese traditional medicine also been used this one so uh, if i say that y- you will be surprised that initially uh, people used to kill b- bear to uh, get the bile which is having tatka so okay. in humans but uh, it, but, but there is a factor mm-hmm. known as delaying mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. so delay between prescription to the doctor and mm. the window period of the symptoms there is mm. a delay time during yeah. this delay time if mm. rpe cells got more damage yeah so it so, it, so, so it is it is not 100% guarantee to mm. recover or recover or restored to get into normal yes yes i totally agree with you because that that's why people are still working on many other treatment uh, possibilities like uh, gene therapy and uh, many people are also trying to find uh, the artificial uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells which mm-hmm. is been made from iPSC cells and uh, there are many other drugs also being studied uh, than the tatka so from that we can understand that uh, nothing in the market is completely curable for any disease like uh, okay. uh, the in- inherited retinal degenerative disease but in some way we can manage the uh, symptoms or manage the uh, p- progression or we can uh, delay the progression in some way yeah 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 i agree to you na- na- good question simple oh, thank you thank you thank you nice nice presentation thank you any other question is there any other comment and man what is the source of this tatka like uh, I, i didn't uh, notice by while you presenting uh that this is actually uh, under market right now so okay. we know the component and uh, it is uh, uh, taurine plus arso deoxycholic acid so it's a chemical uh, derived one yes yes it is so before uh, uh, earlier long time before uh, the people used to kill the bear as i told and there are a lot of yeah. symposiums and a lot of uh, conflicts and all these happened long time back okay okay what are the other procedures that we can use for understanding apoptosis apart okay. from tenders yeah we we can also look at the nxn5 level using fl- fluorescent activated cell sorting and all and uh, yeah. and okay. the very very basic thing uh, we can uh, check the, whether the cells are dead or not using trypan blue as well which is okay okay it, it's a very good presentation it's a clear presentation and your presentation that you prepared is also the powerpoint file is also very nice Thank so you. thanks for the nice presentation we will uh, if there is no further comment or suggestion questions from the audience then we can move to the next uh, presentation is there any anything from the audience let us call us thank you arman thank you thank, thank you sir yeah